So now we are going to start with this panel called Doing Business Worldwide. We kindly ask all the country members to prepare two sheets of paper showing the major economic, financial, and tax indicators. And most countries did so. Now we are going to let them present. It's only a four minute presentation for these two sheets of each country. Time will be strict because we are tight. Translating time, filming time are already given, so we need to keep timing. Just one thing, and we were not able to do that, and we want to give some recognitions that were not given to our speakers early in the morning. This recognition is to Martin Rodriguez Sanchez, thanking him for his speech. So now, I kindly ask the panelists to go to the front, Anita Chimbo, Francisco Betancourt from Peru, Ana, our Peruvian friends, Franklin, Dominican Republic, would you be so kind to call them in the case of uh, Peru, I don't know who's going to be, and then Belarus, Dennis, and Carlos Castro from Venezuela, Ecuador, Franklin, Carlos Castro, and Dennis is here outside. That's where Dennis is, okay. Good. Let's start a four or five minute presentation each so we can have an idea on how to make business worldwide. The same information will be for Colombia, Brazil, Chile, Cyprus, England. They are not here today, so we're going to meet this. Let's start, therefore, with Anita and she will present Ecuador. Those are very concrete indicators. Good afternoon, my pleasure. Ana Chimbo from Ecuador. We are probably not a very important country, but it is in the center of the Earth. Costs are between $800 and $1,000 to open a business, 45 to 60 days. That's the time. This can be done in the website without the costs of a lawyer. But to close a company, uh, the time is longer, 180 to 300 days to close a company. Costs will be between 1,200 and 2,000 US dollars to uh, register uh, property could be around 1% and administrative costs in the public registries around 2,000 
US dollars. Administrative risk is 283 GDP, $6,800. As of 2015, GDP is 100 million, sorry, billions. And our growth in 2016, the first quarter, was a deficit of 1.3%, basically, due to oil price drop. Security of investment, it's low, regretfully, 0.8%. And this is basically due to political blockages, lack of stability. That's why our investment score drops. Next slide. Thank you. 13 free trade zones in the capital, Guayaquil, Esmeraldas, and Guanabí. Recommendations for investment. Our country has an electoral process now. Next elections will be in February, the first round, second in April, with the new administration in May 2017. We expect to have more openness to our country. Business climate. Something interesting this year, specifically between October 25 and 26th, we will have the first World Congress for investors to attract foreign investment, improve investment climate, and show Ecuador as an opportunity republic. They are expecting 160 attendants uh, between foreign and national investors to improve our economy. At tax level in Ecuador, very similar to Latin America, our personal taxes are between zero and 35%. And company taxes is about 22% if capitals are not in fiscal heavens. Otherwise, they will pay 25% yearly, non-resident between 21 to 25%. Local taxes, it depends on the municipality in our country. We have 13 double taxing agreements with some countries among them and with whom we have more relationships is Germany, France, Spain, Mexico, and usually we have five years to have tax compensations. There are some exceptions related to dividends, nonprofit organizations, and banking profits. Social security are 9.5%. 45% as employee contribution and 12.5% for the company. Property taxes also depend on the municipality. We do not have interest taxes. Interest and dividends are 13%. We have a table and you need to verify some elements to calculate the tax amount. Our VAT up to June 2016, it was 12%. After the earthquake, it was raised to 14% up to July 2017. And 366 is the minimum wage, and the basic basket is around 689 US dollars. Thank you very much. Okay, now in alphabetic order, we will ask Guillermo Montaner from Argentina to present. I don't know in Peru who's going to present, Cesar. So it's going to be Cesar from Peru. Can you verify? And then we will continue. Please, Guillermo. I'm going to make some brief comments. In Argentina, nowadays, with this recent administration of nine months, we're still in a perspective scenario, as we said. So, 
in concrete figures. To open a company in Buenos Aires, it takes about 60 days. And I'm saying the city because the company opening each jurisdiction has different requirements and times according to the province. The cost is about 2,000 US dollars. The notary public intervention addicts increases the cost. And this is just a comparison with some provinces. It takes up to several months, four, five months to open a company. And we're talking about a simple company. To close a company in Buenos Aires, a minimum time of 180 days. The cost that I included was a recent case that we had, where we had a settlement balance and notary public costs are lower, but any settlement balance uh, between the accountant, the lawyer, among these uh, professionals, including the notary, we have these figures. When we talk about property, I understood it was intellectual property brands and patents. We were talking about brands and patents that are common, regular. It's about 3,000 US dollars and 120 days to record them or register them. If there is any opposition, it will take longer. And if it is an industrial patent, Time is longer because we need to involve the Industrial Technology Institute, and this may involve some testing to see the validity of this patent. And then GDP, it's 540,000 millions, and this is for 2014 per capita is 13,500 US dollars. These figures are part of distorted information because the last government went beyond manipulating statistics. They did everything. They even part of the technical members of the statistics members. So GDP figures are being reassessed by a new team. Also, GDP dropped in the first quarter of this year. They estimate it will drop even more, 1.5%. And this is basically to economic measures that were implemented like the 66% evaluation that we experienced. Also a backlog in the cost of uh, utilities. Utilities that were paid like five US dollars for a luxury apartment in electric power costs and something similar. So it is not yet consolidated. So this caused some impact in consumption. Minimum wage is of about 500 US dollars. Then taxes. The rate is 35%, but this is a progressive scale. But there is also a scale issue to be solved. Virtually for any activity of minimum importance is 35% because it goes from zero to 35% with 8,000 US dollars. So, uh, in practical terms, it would be 35% this rate for any important activity. For uh, companies, 35%, non residents, 35%. The rate on interests for foreign loans 
if they come from the formal uh, circuit like banks among companies is 15 percent and then we have a global tax fiscal criterion and in general the relation the tax of free tax agreements will be with Uruguay, Germany, Brazil and the Mercosur members a lot of trade traffic and tax losses is five years contributions for social security 22% for uh, retirement and pensions and 6% for medical care. And as you know, in Argentina, this is managed by organizations held by the labor unions. And this is the employer contribution. The employee has 16 and 3% respectively. Property tax, there is a general tax on property. It's about 1%, but it had a recent modification. At local level, it depends on each province. VAT. It's of about, it's of 21%. You have some reductions of 0.5% for food, and some rates go up to 26%. Due to federal considerations, we need to consider that provinces have their own consumption taxes, and they are cascading. Then first the industry distributor, retailer also. And they fluctuate between one to 4.5%. And then we have municipality taxes, but they are lower. We're talking about 0.5 or 6%. So in short, this is it, perspectives. This administration has created an ad hoc ministry to change this scenario to improve investment climate. They created the innovation ministry devoted to promote all this. Many of you may know that the government does not have a majority at the chambers, so any negotiation is slow. That's why changes have not taken place. There's willingness to receive investment, however. Any question? Thank you. Alphabetical order, then. If something is not understood, then we will translate. Entonces, haciendo negocio en Belarus. De la Rusia, el costo y número de días para abrir una compañía, dos días, solo dos días, puede ser tres, y, y que el monto no exceda los 100 dólares. Es, 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 son como muy obvios, ¿no? That is why we, uh, are, we are following this format. El costo y número de días para cerrar una compañía puede ser nueve meses, nueve meses, pueden ser doce meses también. El costo y número de días para registrar la propiedad de tres a diez días y el costo más o menos es de ochenta dólares. La clasificación del nivel de riesgo país es medio. No sé lo que significa, pero bueno, es medio. O sea, digamos, 
es medio. El PIB per cápita anual es de 5.740 dólares. El PIB total por uh, país hace 54.6 millones. No, aquí el crecimiento del GDP 2006 es negativo, menos 0.7%. El, el PIB total de país 54.6 mil millones de dólares. El nivel de seguridad de inversión es medio. Las zonas especiales en el país, que son zonas económicas libres. Si tú tienes una compañía en esta zona, se puede hacer. Tienes tax, eh, impuesto cero de cinco años solamente si eres experto, pero se, únicamente por cinco años se da la excepción cero. La recomendación de inversión, compañías de tecnología, la industria y tecnologías innovadoras. La siguiente diapositiva, por favor. Bueno. Aquí la tasa de impuesto para persona física, 13%, de persona moral, 18%. Los, aquí no hay un intervalo, esto es fijo, ¿sí? no es sobre rangos. Los impuestos a no residentes, 12%. Si abren una compañía en una zona libre, no necesitan pagar eh, impuestos y en zona cinco años únicamente para exportación nada más durante cinco años la doble tasación en, con tres países la federación rusa, china y los Emir, emiratos árabes unidos para las compañías de BRIC tenemos una ubicación geográfica privilegiada con Rusia y con la Unión Europea las, ex, ex, las exenciones para compensaciones de pérdida tres años, las excepciones en zonas económicas libres o en el campo eh, todas las tasas de pensión vivienda, seguridad social 35% que es bastante alto el impuesto sobre bienes inmuebles o propiedades 2.5%. El impuesto sobre intereses, no tenemos este tipo de impuesto. Impuesto sobre dividendos, el 12%. No, no es 12%, está mal. Es 13%, ¿sí? Es, es como la de la tasa para persona física, ¿sí? Es la misma. Y también el IVA del 20%. Eso es todo. Muchísimas gracias. Vamos con México, Francisco. Excellent. Good afternoon. I, okay, just to, we're waiting for the presentation to, to be ready. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Well, I can explain it to you. Well, I have uh, presented all the benefits of Mexico as a country to invest in. Mexico has had a very important growth in the last few years, and also it's worth to mention that the global firm have been more than 15 years in Mexico, and because of the big great culture and all the territorial extension that Mexico has and all the foreign investment we have, definitely Mexico, it is a good country to invest. So let's get started. In order to establish a company in Mexico, what we require? Yes, obviously, we do have a notary cost that is around 700 or $800, but there are zones where the cost can be lower. What, how long it takes to establish an entity in Mexico. Previously, it was easier. Today, it takes 12 
weeks, mainly because there are some registration being requested with respect to a new uh, company in the public registration. So last year and this year, it has been offered a new kind of entity that is called Simplified Action Company, that it, it doesn't need to be registered in the public register. This kind of entity is going to have a procedure that can be done electronically and can be established in only one day. Obviously, it has restrictions. Those are entities that cannot bill to more than five uh, million uh, of income per year, and for those entrepreneurs that were using this. In order to close a company where there's more problems and the cost is a little bit higher, around $2,500 or $3,000, thinking of a company that, that is completely in settlement because we may t it may take years to uh, dissolve an entity. So the cost is around $2,500 approximately. In order to register a series of properties, we're talking about intellectual property, we're talking about real estate. State. Well, it will depend a lot on the kind of uh, goods that we want to register, and the cost will depend on this. But it can, this can range from one or two months to more time, depending on the proceeding we want to carry out. The level of risk to invest in Mexico, and I'm sure that you are going to be interested, according to the scoring RNG, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch, the investment in Mexico is satisfactory. Basically, they have a series of guidelines. For example, they call optimum, high, good, satisfactory, and then negative. Mexico is considered a country satisfactory, that is satisfactory to invest. There are external and internal factors that have, uh, have modified the investment because of the borrow uh, price drop, because the greatest investor is our neighbor in the north, the U.S., and the, our dependence as a country is limited to what the U.S. does. But the level of the risk climate is considered satisfactory according to the scoring agencies. And the GDP, we talk about a GDP, total GDP, uh, one, 1,142 uh, well, obviously, the variation in this last year was downward. We had a decrease instead of an increase. However, with all the global crisis affecting us, this decrease has not exceeded the limits that at some point we had in Mexico in more severe economic crisis. Well, uh, well, moving on a different subject, you will have this on the presentation. I urge you to check a web page where we are putting in Mexico, promexico.gov, where we are posting all the information about doing business in Mexico. What are the characteristics that are measured? This is a document that tells us why to invest in Mexico, and I'm going to summarize them for you. Mexico as such has been a country that has been classified uh, very high, mainly because it is considered a very competitive country. It is an emerging uh, economy. It has interesting growth, not like the ones in China or India, because of their population have a higher growth, but it's growing at the 3% rate. It has a very stable policy, even though we have had some variations in our government and the executive branches, but the policy of Mexico is quite stable. It has structural reforms that are fostering foreign investment, mainly in hydrocarbide topics, carbon topics, there's lots of foreign direct investment in Mexico. We have a high capacity of industries, mainly some specific 
zones and maquiladoras and so on. What happens? Mexico and North America, it is the country with the least cost to invest because of all the indispensable expenses to establish and manage a company. We have treat international treaties to avoid double taxation and inter free trade, international free trade agreements with Mexi U.S. and Canada, and we are part of the TTP. TPP, but we have treaties with more than 50 countries, including European powers, U.S. and countries in South America and Asia. Mexico is considered the number one of technology exporter in Latin America and has different fiscal benefits in maquilas and technology. Mexico also is considered the 39 country as the best country to invest according to the World Bank figures. There's a statistics in four ways, Forbes that highlight for immigrants, Mexico is number one country to live. Why? Because the culture, the social culture is easily adaptable for a person that comes to live in Mexico. Mexico has excellent talents at the level of the population. We are a country that is established, that is made up of young people and all those young people are performing activity that continuously foster the economy of the country. Finally, in order to, to move away of the ugly part, Mexico pays lots of taxes that unfortunately have increased in the last few years. According to the models of the OCDE, Mexico was considered the worst country in tax, tax uh, collection. We paid the least amount of taxes in Latin America and in a list issued by the OCDE, the income tax rate for individuals through uh, ranges for, from 30 to 35 percent for entities income tax rate is 30 percent on the earnings the net fiscal earning and then we have to pay 10 percent for labor in distributing the earnings to the employees that work for our companies for, for foreign payment uh, Mexico withholds 10 to 25% and there's a tax of 42 and 43% for payments made in tax havens. In the case of fiscal losses, we have 10 years to compensate those fiscal losses. In the case of the social security for our employees, it ranges depending of the amount of income of each employee between 20 and 30 percent, including pension payments, social security, medical care, and housing. In the case of uh, the withholding tax or of earned interest, uh, 20 percent banking rates for someone that would like to have a financing are between 9 percent to 70 percent, depending on the financing required. And also for dividends, Mexico for individuals, they should pay 10 percent of the income tax in the case for entities or some of those companies that have been paying their taxes will have a benefit of paying a rate of 0% according to the fiscal account of the earnings that should be managed in our companies. The value added tax is 16%. So this is all the information I have for you. Absolutely, Mexico, it is a good country to invest in because of what I have just mentioned. Thank you very much. Well, in alphabetical order, we have Peru. My presentation will be short. Why invest in my country? We have had a change in the government. 
we have had a inflationary process. We have had a recession in the last year. This year has a good perspective for the establishment of companies for foreign capital because there are certain benefits and those taxes have been reduced. Nowadays, the VAT reaches 18 percent. The income tax for entities is 28 percent. With respect to the indiv individual's income tax, is between 15 percent as of $9,000 up to more or less $100,000. After that, 28 percent is paid of, of income tax. Well, with respect to the labor uh, load, we have two regimes for the payroll. In this case, if they exceed what 525,000, they have to be in a labor regime that uh, reaches 40 percent of labor tax. But if we do not reach that income, it could be a special labor regime that it does not reach the 20 percent. The GDP of our country and uh, for 2015 is 326 percent. This has a slightly reduction. We expect that this year this percentage will be exceeded. The, the ba basket of goods is uh, 1,500 souls, which is for $1,500. And to establish a company takes one month. The cost of the establishment is around one thousand dollars and to register a trademark it takes one and a half months and can go can cost around two thousand uh, dollars no more with respect to the municipality taxes like our Argentine apartment uh, said is quite low but when it when it comes to the purchase of property, is levied in 5% for entities. Regarding the level of risk in our country, it is satisfactory according to the re most recent statistics obtained, even though there's been a recession with the new government, w w the, the foreign capital is being uh, attracted. We are fostering the foreign capital to invest in agriculture and gas. We have natural gas, lots of it, and we have some benefits with the free trade agreement that we, with China, and we have many other treaties, among them with Chile, and even some with the U.S., where all the foreign capital in Latin America can benefit us. Well, so the country is open, so your customers can invest in our country. Thank you very much. Well, this is a Dominican Republic. Good afternoon. As you can see, this is what we missed last year. Well, some of us missed last year. So we are uh, showing you this image so you can get to know us through an image. So this is through rankings. Well, to establish a company takes approximately from 30 to 60 days. In most of the cases, 60 days. It has an approximate cost of $500. It can go up to $1,000 on a percentual base. For each piece of capital invested, 1% is paid as tax to the authority. To close a company, the approximate cost is around 
around $500. That, and the process also, uh, all the paperwork takes 60 days, and even though it takes up to six months. Well, to register a property, the cost is around 22,000 pesos. No, 35,000. We're talking about $800, and additionally, a uh, 3.85% of tax, depending on the value of the property and the registration that is done when buying a property. We have a GDP of 61.16 billion, a GDP of 5,950. Dominican Republic in the last year has the highest growth per capita in Latin America. The last year was 7.3 from one year to the other, and the previous year was 6.3. So let's go to the tax uh, issues. Well, as it's, it is said here, our constitution establishes that the Dominican person will pay according to the uh, purchasing capacity, so the government prepare a budget where the tax is determined. How this works? In the budget, we consider the taxes. Those taxes, we do not have state and municipal taxes. We only manage one only kind tax of tax. Currently, we have 27 percent, and the base that is established, the fiscal earning, the net fiscal benefit. Why fiscal? Because in the case of many countries, you have the e-billing, so your accounting earning is your fiscal earning. In our case, we haven't reached there. There's some revenues and expenses that are uh, argue, argued, and this is what is levied. The VAT, we call it EBIS, it's 18 percent. We levy all the services except the medical care, uh, financial services, like uh, the uh, schools. All the products, in most of them are levied because since we have a wide base that is not levied, we are we want to buy the to widen the base. So. We want to widen it. Well, the consumption tax is variable. It is selective because this is for telecommunication area, insurance area, for uh, smoking uh, sectors that are really affected in, it, in its reform that is prepared. The uh, allocation tax, when when people, the person dies, the, it is a 3% of the property. Donation tax is because because this was to avoid this, that in order not to pay the 3%, since it, it was not established at the beginning of the 90s, they levied the donation with the same income tax, so the people would be obliged to declare that part. Well, the property, uh, real estate tax, we have 1%. It's exempt for the individual up to 6.5 million. It means $150,000 approximately. Well, car tax, 1% uh, with respect to the value of the vehicle. All the gambling tax, ten, well, all uh, taxes, taxes on assets. Well, as, I, as we said before, this was this existed in Mexico. This is uh, optional. When you have losses or gains, the income uh, produces a tax less than 1%. We will always pay this tax on assets. Well, the custom taxes, like in any other country, uh, based on the value as C. I F, and depending on the tariff treaties, the contribution of employers and employers or employees, it is 5.9 percent to the employer. Those are the social costs on the payroll. Additionally, we pay a labor risk safe that goes from 1.3, according to the risk of the staff involved, and it contributes to an institution that is the one that trains all the professional or helps in the professional career, charging 1% of each payroll. 
In general terms, this is related to taxes and the general economy of Dominican Republic, but there are data that are not present in the statistics are important. The investment climate in the in the island. We are we are an island continent. Island has everything, even though it is small with a 10 million inhabitants. But even though we have that amount of people, we have real estate tourism that is very important. One of the greatest of all the Caribbean. So we have a huge climate for investment. This is it. If you have any questions. Well. Well, it strikes my attention the the surplus that you have in the GDP of 7%, and data that I never imagined to see in the Dominican Republic that are quite pleasant. But our perspective, the, the ones that work for foreign trade, it is the big influence, good or evil, of Haiti because of the severe problems that they have experienced by the earthquakes, the economy, the change of government, and so on. So for Mexican investors, what would you put as the main bounties of Dominican Republic? We could talk if uh, figures is quite cold, but it's, it is very surprising the surplus that you have in terms of the global economy. What uh, your name is? Luis, thank you for your question. First of all, we have a political situation with Haiti. It has never come to the entrepreneurial level. It has never affected our productive capacity. Even when at international level, many international organizations try that due to our closeness, uh, we have direct support to Haiti, but this has never affected us. And now regarding the virtues of the country. Number one, as a continent island, it is a very high consumption country. In fact, all visitors are surprised when they see the living standard in a very small island. So commerce grows a lot. We have a good Mexican investment, great Spanish investment. Something said that we have the Guacaranis complex. It is that we open our arms to tourists. That's why we receive a lot of tourism. And that's why we have grown a lot, both to foreign investment and tourists. Okay, now let's turn to Venezuela. And they say that the first will be the, the last will be the first. But you forgot something. The uh, Dominican dancing is very nice, especially if you like to dance. So I will try to do it from here. If not, I will stand up. Yes, I think that I will have to. Let's see if it opens. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. Venezuela is always at the end. And this is the expectation because you will wonder who's going to invest in Venezuela. But I will give my perspective according to these figures and my vision on what's going to happen in Venezuela and why we still have some customers in Venezuela and why some of them have not left Venezuela. Look, the average days to open a company is between 15, 60 days and 200, 200 US dollars. To close a company will be more or less the same uh, to open, to register a property and, or to buy a property, you should pay 
0.50% for taxes between administrative expenses that would be about $800 and the time would be 30 days. Risk scoring is too high. There is a lot of risk in our country. 2,932. And of course, this is one of the highest worldwide. Our GDP is 6,557, and it is 205,785 US dollars. The growth for 2016, according to statistics, for 2015, it dropped minus 5. Point seven, and for forecasts will be of eight percent for the end of the year. So definitely, figures are not good for Venezuela. Investment security level it's too low due to the political crisis that affects also the economy. We have special zones for uh, customs. We have four free zones and two free ports. Paraguana, Ajua, Cumana, and Merida. They are located in Falcón, Suria, Sucre, and Merida. And free ports is New Spartan. You have here the famous Margarita Island and Santa Elena, bordering with Brazil. Investment recommendations. We expect that the dialogue will overcome the crisis that affects the economy and business climate will be benefited from this dialogue. So we need to expect the situation is not for investment right now. Okay. Tax rates for individuals are between 6 to 34 percent, and it is, of course, progressive, as in all countries. Tax rates for companies is between 15 to 34 percent. Taxes for non-residents are between 1 and 34 percent. Local taxes, municipality taxes vary according to the municipality, and almost all states have the same, but the municipalities are different. And we also have double uh, taxation treaties. We have subscribed 31 treaties. Uh, we can name uh, Belarus, United States, the Netherlands. Now, uh, lost compensation years, three years. Exceptions. Non profit matters will be included in exceptions. Pension uh, rate, what we call social security, is 4%. Companies will contribute depending on the risk level between 9, 10, and 11%. In property tax, real estate, it depends on the municipality and interest tax. They are not taxed. Now, dividend tax is 34% due to the difference determined by the company income tax and granted dividends. Uh, Venezuela has high inflation, and we are subject to this uh, financial inflation. And we have adjustments up to last year as a consequence. We have that many times there's a big difference, even when these adjustments were eradicated last year. So you have to calculate the tax and then dividend, and you can adjust due to inflation. But if you allocate more dividends, when you pay the dividend to the businessmen, we retain 34%. If you pay Less, of course, no one will uh, withdraw more. They will not 
uh, withdraw dividends, otherwise they don't pay. The rate is similar to Ecuador, as you can see. Monthly wage has just been increased, $15. Now it raised to 34 with a subsidy of 60.34. Then to conclude, I can just say that we expect dialogue in Venezuela. You need to believe in dialogue between the parties, government and the opposition, and that everything is resolved by democratic means. We have several uh, possibilities. If we have a revocatory referendum this year, we will call for elections. This year, we will have a new president and a new government. If it is next year, then the vice president will be up to the end of the mandate, and then elections will be in 2018. And we will have a new administration in March 2019. Let's have a solution before, and that we have new government in Venezuela or dialogue. To overcome this serious economic political crisis, it's political, but it affects the economic matters. Personally, I believe that once we have a change in Venezuela, it will become an emerging economy. Why? Because we need to do everything. We need to foster all the sectors and all the oil industry will come to invest in Venezuela. Okay, take note of that. Well, I will change that. <laughs> Gladly. Sorry, we cannot hear what this person is saying because he's not using the microphone. The mining industry, iron, uh, oil. Well, it has to receive investment. You also need to eradicate the exchange rate control. There's no reason for it to be well. Some of them will get wealthy. Uh, some of uh, them have thought in putting U.S. dollar as the currency. Well, oil is the biggest reserve all over the world in the Orinoco region. It's heavy crude. You need to hit it. And not everybody has the technology to do it. My recommendation, what all customers are doing, and why we are still alive, and why we still have businesses. We have still businesses because all companies are working at the minimum. They are holding their position. As soon as we uh, start up, no one will stop us. So hold on, Venezuela, waiting for you. Well, thank you to our panelists. We thank them. So they are back. So now let's make the change. We are kind of uh, delayed, and due to our timing, we are going to speed up to close earlier. So now let's turn to the fiscal panel, which is a summary of possibly possible changes in Mexico. And we will have all the members of the fiscal and legal area in Mexico. So they will come to the front now. Please.